Chelsea 3, Aston Villa 1, tactical breakdown, let's go. We saw a much improved Chelsea in this game, with Mauricio Pochettino making some tactical adjustments that made the entire team play better, and the main one of those was changing the spacing of the team. Usually Chelsea are a team that plays with a lot of width, and thus end up having large spaces between each player. Whilst this can be beneficial to do, it helps stretch the opposition side and open up spaces between their players for passing lanes or for teammates to occupy, it can also hinder teams that like to play a short passing game. Chelsea are one of these types of teams, we have a lot of technical players that prefer to have the ball at their feet and specialise in one two-touch passing. The prime examples of this are the two central midfielders, Enzo Fernandes and Moises Caicedo. Both are exceptional passers of the football and in comparison to all other midfielders in the top 5 leagues over the last 365 days, have very high percentiles for short passes attempted and completed. Admittedly, Enzo's short passing has dipped from last season likely a result of the peculiar position he's been deployed in this season under Pochettino. Higher up the pitch, the Argentine hasn't been able to get on the ball as often, which has impacted the team's play as a whole. It's been reported lately that Pochettino had a group meeting with the players, where they discussed as a unit what could be done to help the team, with both coaches and players offering up their viewpoints. The overwhelming majority of those players likely said that Enzo Fernandez needed to be played deeper, and the spacing of the team had to be shorter. And credit does have to go to the Chelsea head coach here, even from someone like me who is one of his harshest critics, because for this game against Aston Villa he clearly took those criticisms on board and actively changed how the team functioned with a minor change that had a big impact. Enzo played that deeper role, he and Caicedo operated as a double pivot and this benefited both players. Enzo was able to link up with his fellow South American and play Chelsea away from the very intense Villa pressure, the extra body in midfield allowing both midfielders to show off their press resistant natures as they finally had the out ball after the press was beaten, which we don't usually have. And this wasn't just limited to the midfield, every player was offering themselves as an option to the man on the ball, something we haven't often done so far this season. Instead of pushing high up the pitch for long passes, leaving this giant hole in midfield that we've spoken about so often on this channel, the players opted to come short to the man on the ball, which in turn attracted the Villa players to come forward with them, opening up space behind them for us to play into around the corner. Enzo and Caicedo were doing this exact thing so well during this game, with Enzo providing the Ecuadorian an option every time he got on the ball, then shifting the ball quickly wide to play out, or back to a defender for security, giving us more control of this game in general. These two played excellently throughout the entire game, severely outclassing the Claret and Blue midfield and alleviating the defence from being vulnerable. Speaking of the defence, that's another change that saw us improve. The balance of the defence was much better, the cover for those defenders was increased, and the knowledge of when to go forward versus when to come back was clearly instilled in the players. The defensive setup was one we've seen in the past but with slightly different personnel. When we were out of possession, we played in a 4-4-2, with Palmer and Gallagher acting as faux nines, and Jackson and Madueke as left and right midfielders respectively. This gave our defence a different dynamic, both wide forwards are willing runners and have a lot of pace, they were able to supplement the defence by tracking back when required, whilst the nines were tasked with pressuring the opposition defenders on the ball and trying to intercept any less than ideal passes. Aston Villa love getting their fullbacks, Alex Moreno and Matty Cash in this case, really high up the pitch to make runs in behind, and these two extra bodies helping out on the flanks allowed our own fullbacks, Ben Chilwell and Malagusto, to track those runs as the wingers were occupied with our own wingers. For the first time this season it felt like every player knew where to be and what time to be there. When one player stepped up, someone would drop in to cover the space they vacated. Often we saw Moises Caicedo covering in a central centre-back role when one or both of the fullbacks pushed higher, or Enzo dropping deep into wide areas if one of the centre-backs stepped out with the ball. Gallagher and Palmer would also drop deep to aid the midfield if needed, with one of those two staying high when the other dropped. The team looked very fluid, like a well-oiled machine, with loads of moving parts working in tandem, which is something we've rarely seen from this group of players. Again, credit has to go to Poch for uniting the players as one, we seemed more together in this game than any of our other games combined, with every player fighting for one another, and no man being left behind if they needed support. We actually see some of these principles in action for our first goal, which comes off the back of some really neat, controlled passing. Caicedo drops centrally into the defence, collecting the ball. Gallagher drops into that vacated midfield area, and then he and Enzo both drop deeper to give him an option, dragging the Villa midfield further forward and creating a pocket between the defence and the midfield. 
The ball is played to Connor, who quickly returns it back to Moises, who plays it squared to Badia Shiel. Now, because Gallagher dropped deep, this created some rotation in the side, with Jackson now moving central to cover the space he vacated, and Chilwell then in turn occupying the left wing. Badia Shiel plays a first time pass to Jackson in that pocket that was created, and though his pass doesn't find the target, because of the rotation, the Villa defenders are all out of sorts. Matty Cash has been tasked to mark Jackson, and has come narrow to track him. Leon Bailey, who was supposed to be tracking Chilwell, has pushed up to pressure Badia Shiel out in the wide left area, leaving Chilwell completely free on the left wing. A bit of shambolic passing means that Villa struggled to play out from the intense midfield pressure from Enzo, and the out ball to the wide area where Cash slash Bailey were supposed to be goes straight to Chilwell instead. A small triangle between Chile, Enzo and Gallagher forms, and they neatly play through the Villa defence with one touch passing. The ball goes out to Jackson on the left wing, who dribbles into the box and puts a ball across the Madueke, who lays the ball back to Gallagher, who finishes with a Frank Lampard-esque effort, placing the ball into the top corner and putting the Blues up 1-0. A really nice team goal that exemplified how well this team can play if they are set up well tactically, and this didn't stop here, we would go two goals up just 10 minutes later with another really good piece of coordinated passing play. This all starts from the back once more, Chelsea are controlling possession and that same situation arises. Caicedo drops between the centre backs, the ball goes out wide to Badia Shiel, Enzo and Gallagher drop deep, Enzo collects the ball and plays it square, this time going across the pitch to Di Sassi in a right back area, and the Villa defence can't deal with the rotation once again. This time it's Yuri Tielemont who goes out to Badia Shiel, Watkins marks Caicedo, Camera and Louise follow the central midfielders in Enzo and Gallagher, which leaves John McGinn in no man's land out on our right hand side. He has to either cut out the passing lane or pressure Di Sassi on the ball. He tries to do both but ends up doing neither, and Di Sassi easily plays the ball past him into Noni Madueke on the inside. He turns and runs up the pitch, laying it off for an overlapping Malo Gusto who puts a peach of a ball into the box where Nicholas Jackson, now in a central position from the rotation, is waiting to meet it and heads Chelsea into a two goal lead. The third goal is from a dead ball so I can't really tactically analyse it, but it would be criminal of me to not mention this absolute screamer from Enzo Fernandez. A beautiful free kick into the top left corner that not even a goalkeeper the quality of Emi Martinez could reach. This is genuinely our goal of the season so far, goal of the tournament, and likely won't be trumped. The celebration is special too, silencing the bogus reports of Enzo wanting to leave, putting down a flag that says remember who I am, and capping a player of the match level performance from our Argentinian magician. Also, credit to Nicholas Jackson because his involvement in this celebration is so funny to me. I love that guy so much. The free kick itself does come from a nice piece of short passing, a little give and go between Enzo and Palmer before the former is fouled by Tielemont. I will say I'm still not really sure if this is a foul in truth. At the time this did look like just a miss kick, but looking at the replays you can see that Tielemann's thigh impedes Enzo's right leg when he pulls the trigger to shoot. This is a very soft one, but it is a foul and the goal that came after it is such a belter, I don't think many will be complaining about it. Villa did get a late consolation goal in stoppage time, and it all comes from us switching off at a short corner, something which I alluded to in my match preview before the game. Admittedly, overall we dealt with these types of chances pretty well, but at the end of the game maybe a little bit of complacency crept in and we allowed our opposition a goal back, and denied poor Georgi Petrovic a clean sheet once again. This short corner goes out to Cash, who has a shot but it deflects away to Douglas Luiz. He plays the ball inside to Jacob Ramsey, who plays it in for Zaniolo. The Italian dummies the ball, deceiving our defence, and the ball falls to Moussa Diaby on the edge of the box who sweetly strikes the ball into the bottom right corner, through the crowd, a great finish that Petrovic had no chance of saving in truth. Pochettino set us up brilliantly tactically in this game, but I'm not going to overhype our performance too much, Aston Villa were clearly not at their usual best in this one, and we must see this type of performance consistently from now on until the end of the season. We've seen it far too many times where we play excellently one game, then poorly the next. But with the meeting between the players and our coach, this excellent performance, and this more united team, I really hope this is a turning point for Chelsea Football Club. And that was it. 3-1 to the Blues who now go marching on into the fifth round, where we will face our old rivals in Leeds United, which is a tasty affair. Before then though, we have a league encounter with South London neighbours Crystal Palace on Monday, so look forward to the match preview that will be out before the game. But if you can't wait until then, maybe watch one of these two videos on screen in the meantime. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, in the rain or in the dry,
Keep that blue flag flying high. Come on, you blues.